Welcome to Access Queries Power Criteria. I'm Trader Laurie. What is Power Criteria? We're talking about advanced select queries using comparison operators, Boolean logic, and functions. If you've heard me talk about queries before, you know I think of tables as buckets and the data as little blocks, children's blocks that go in the bucket. And a query is a lid that allows you to look into the bucket. It is not a separate bucket, it is the actual data. So if we don't want to see all the data, we just simply tape over those holes. How do we tape over those holes? By writing criteria, saying what we want to see in that data. Let's look at the query by example pane, the QBE pane, down below, down here. So when I, anytime I make a select query, I've got my table at the top and my QBE at the bottom. If I wanted to build a query on a query, I can do that. Simply go to the show table and change it to queries, and I can nest up to 50 queries. And so <laughs> I, I never needed that many, but if you want, you can build a query on a query on a query up to 50 times. But this is the question most people ask. Can I delete this query? I inherited this database, and I don't know if this, this query is required, and I've got hundreds of queries. I want to delete some of them. Well, if you go to Database Tools, Database Dependencies, first click on the query that you're wondering, sh can I delete it? And when you choose data, uh, Object Dependencies, you have the option to see objects that depend on me, or objects that I depend on. So if you see that objects depend on this, in this case, some forms depend on that query, then I probably wouldn't want to delete the query, unless I know for a fact I don't need those forms. Then I would probably start with the forms and delete those first. This is another big problem, and that's the Cartesian product. And some of you may look at this and say, I can see exactly what the problem is, and others might not have a clue. Well, there's 77 products, and there's 830 orders. Yet, when I run this query, I get 63,987 records. And I see a lot of duplicates. Why? Because these, uh, this is called the Cartesian product. Because this is not related. These tables must be related uh, for it to see only one order per product or one product per order. So make sure that whenever you build your select query that the tables have a relationship. Let's look at some common comparison operators. Is null. Is null means there is no data. It does not mean zero. It does not mean a tag or a dash or any other placeholder. It means nothing at all. It's blank. What's the opposite of is null? not as null. And that means it does contain data, any kind of data, including a zero or a dash. So it may not be the data you're looking for, but it means that it's not blank. Whenever you want to look between two dates, you will use the between and then see the hashtags here. The good thing about access is it will put in that, it, as soon as you put in between with a date, it'll automatically put those hashtags around it. So between always works with and. So between and and, and that finds anything in 2006. Greater than or equal to M star. I've had a lot of people guess about this, and they think it has something to do with Roman numerals. It doesn't. <laughs> it means any uh, word that begins with the letter M or all the way through Z. Let's look and see how something as simple as the star, which means find all missing characters, along with a space, can make a difference depending on how you place it. For example, if I write star ink, then I would find zinc. But if I put ink star, I would find including, but not zinc. If I use star ink star, I would find Lincoln including and zinc. Sometimes you want to expand your search, sometimes you want to narrow your search. So that's how, why you might use these differently. Vista ink with a space, I would put a space between the star and the INC. But with Mac ink, I want that dot at the end, so I would put the star at the end as well. How powerful. All just by putting in a star. And remember, whenever you put in a star, it, Access will automatically put in the like and the quotation marks. Here's some more date criteria that's very um, powerful. A lot of people have asked me about this. So hopefully you know the function date paren paren, 
and this means today's date. Minus 7 means exactly one week ago. So I can put that in my date criteria and find data just from one week ago. Now if I add the greater than symbol here and change this to 30, then it will find any date within the last 30 days. That's a very popular one. A lot of people want that for invoicing. I've had people say, what about birthdays? I want to be able to find just my birthdays of all the people on my list so I can send them a special uh, birthday uh, message or put it in the newsletter. So you can see here, that means in the field birth date, look for the month that equals 8, which would be August. And what if I want both August and September, because my newsletter only comes out twice, um, once for every two months? Just use the OR. Under criteria, you'll, you'll have an OR. We'll talk more about that later. So just do it again for ni the ninth month. Here's some more advanced criteria using functions. So remember, this is going to be down in my criteria, but now I'm creating a new field. Whenever you put in a, a name with a, a, a colon like that, then anything after that would be a function. So this would be the new field name, and this is the function that follows. In this case, I'm going to add See, date add, four months, and that's M, to the order date. Four months to the order date, and order date is a field. In this case, the new field is called time, and I'm going to find the difference between the order date and the ship date in days. In other words, I'm going to subtract the order minus the shipped in days, because I want to see how many days has elapsed since we've ordered. Now I mentioned the OR, and it is a Boolean function. A boole it's part of the Boolean language, and you'll see it down below. And I showed you one, but look, I have three here, but only seven are allowed. You only get seven. So if you, if you keep going down, you only get seven. But it really means AND. It doesn't mean OR. Uh, and what I mean by that is, if I have Smith, Martinez, and Wang, down here as ORs, that means I'm going to show any record that is Smith, Martinez, or Wang. Now if I used a, a true AND criteria, that means that I would have one here and one here, that means it must have something in both records. But this is actually adding it. So that would become an AND normally, but in Boolean it's OR. It's very confusing, I understand. What if I need more than seven ORs, and I only have room for seven down here? Well, you have a couple of options. One is to simply write Smith or Martinez or Wang, and then all of your others on the same line in the criteria. Another option would be to use the IN function. When you use IN, open parentheses, then you could put Smith and then separate it by a comma. So, and remember, each of these criteria must be in quotation marks. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please click like and feel free to subscribe to the Trainer Laurie channel.